Welcome to this third episode of the Getting Started with Grail series of screencasts. In the last instalment, I introduced controller actions and views, the basic elements for producing web pages. I also showed you how to use GSP tags and also how to create reusable page fragments as partial templates. We're now going to develop the UI further through the use of another reusable view technology, custom GSP tags. The Pomodoro application currently looks like this. If you remember, the format for those task dates was hard-coded into the associated partial template. But what if we want to use the same format elsewhere? Hard-coding it everywhere is simply not maintainable. Instead, we're going to create a new GSP tag that formats the dates in a consistent manner. So how do we go about creating a custom tag? First of all, we create a new tag library. This is simply a class that has a tag lib suffix and resides under the Grails app slash taglib directory. Next, we put our custom tags in their own namespace by declaring a static namespace property. You'll see what effect this has when we use the new tag, but it helps avoid name conflicts between tags that have the same name in different tag libraries. The tag itself is declared as a closure property, just like a controller action. In this case though, the closure takes an argument, a map of attribute names with their values. We want this tag to render a formatted date to the output, so we use the left shift operator on the dynamic out property. You don't need to worry where this property comes from, Grails adds it to all tags. Now for the date string itself, we could do the formatting manually, but there is an easier way. The GSP tag format date already does what we need, so we just have to invoke it from our own tag. Fortunately, reusing a GSP tag in this way is trivial. Call it as a method on the tag's namespace. So the namespace is the standard G, the tag name is format date, and then the tag's attributes become named arguments of the method call. Also note how we are accessing our tag's date attribute as a property on the closure argument. The tag is now ready to use, so let's incorporate it into the partial template for tasks. So, we replace the references to format date with short date and remove the format attribute. Note that I'm using a prefix of pomo for our tag. That's the custom namespace we specified earlier. If we refresh the main page, we should see the same as before. Staying with those task dates, it would be nice to display the deadlines in different colours depending on whether the deadline has passed, it's today, or it's imminent. Since some logic is involved, a tag is an ideal solution. So, going back to our tag lib, we can add the new tag as another closure property, this time with the name deadline. This will display the date in the same format as before, but it will also add a span element with a CSS class. We start by getting the current date and time, and then removing the time element from that and the date attribute. We then subtract the two dates to get the number of days between them. Note that subtracting two dates in this way is a feature of Groovy that isn't available in Java. The CSS class is set based on whether the difference is negative i.e. the deadline is before today, zero, or fewer than five days. Finally, we write a span element with the corresponding CSS class to the out property, and then delegate the date rendering to our own short date tag. This time, the tag method is called on POMO, our custom namespace, rather than G. To get the dates displaying in different colors, we just need to finish off by modifying the CSS. And now we update our partial template to the use of the new tag. And when we refresh the page again, we can see that we get our colored deadlines in red, amber, and blue. These tags can be reused anywhere in your application. And as you have seen, 
the IDE knows about them and can offer autocomplete. But how does an IDE know about the attributes of a tag? We can provide a hint by adding javadocs to our tag definitions. All we have to do is add an attribute javadoc tag with an optional required string and a description of the attribute. That's it! The IDE can now add all required attributes when auto-completing the tag, and it can also tell you about the optional attributes. So far, I have only demonstrated empty tags, i.e. ones that only have attributes but no content. So how do you implement something like the each tag that does wrap some content? As an example, I'm going to create a new tag that displays user input with paragraphs. At the moment, task details are compressed together as a single paragraph no matter how many blank lines exist in the original text. This is because the default behaviour of HTML is to collapse whitespace. The solution I'm going for replaces blank lines with HTML paragraph tags using a regular expression. It's probably not the most efficient approach, but it is simple. This tag is declared just like the others but this time the closure has a second argument, which I call body. The body argument is a closure that you can execute to generate the content of the tag. In this case, I want to first trim the white space from either end of the content, then replace blank lines with paragraph tags, and finally write the result to the tag output. I also add start and end paragraph tags either side of the body since the regular expression only inserts paragraph tags in the middle of the text. Now I can just wrap the task details with my new custom tag. In this case, the tag content is just a simple groovy expression, but it could also contain HTML markup and GSP tags. Whatever the content, the new tag will just work. One final note, the div element I added is not essential, but the task details could include multiple paragraphs, so wrapping them all in a div will make later styling easier. That's it for this week. You now know how to create different types of GSP tags and use other tags from within your own. It's all pretty straightforward, but custom tags give you a great deal of flexibility and power. Next time, I'll introduce managing users and access control so that more than one person can use the Pomodoro application.